D, the chairperson of Africana Studies at Tennessee State University. And of course, Doctor, before we uh, head our break, uh, you promised that you would give us some information relative to Malcolm outside mm. of the uh, nation. And of course, we'll give you an opportunity to do that now. Yeah. The Malcolm outside of the Nation of Islam was uh, uh, a new man, mm -hmm. totally transformed. He never, uh, he, he didn't continue to spout uh, uh, racist rhetoric. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a person who was actually moving a lot closer to Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in February of 1965, mm -hmm. just before his assassination, he'd actually gone to Selma, Alabama in mm -hmm. order to form a coalition of conscience with Martin Luther mm -hmm. King. Unfortunately, at the time, Dr. King was in jail, mm -hmm. but he did take counsel with his wife, Coretta Scott King, mm -hmm. Andrew Young, Bernard Lockett, okay. as well mm -hmm. as John Lewis. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to say that he made some mistakes when he was inside of the Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. and he understood that Martin Luther King's strategy mm -hmm. of freedom, justice, and equality was the best way for our people to go. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to take the civil rights struggle from the level of civil rights to the level of human rights. Mm -hmm. And rather than trying to lodge our case with the United States Supreme Court, mm -hmm. he wanted to make an argument for uh, human rights uh, mm -hmm. before the United Nations and the World Court mm -hmm. because he actually saw, uh, you know, today, for example, we hear people talking about genocide going on mm -hmm. in the Sudan yeah. and mm -hmm. other parts of the world. In 1964 and 65, Malcolm was saying that uh, the white supremacist government of this country, the mm -hmm. white supremacists in this country were actually committing acts of genocide mm -hmm. against African Americans. Mm -hmm. So he was making the case for genocide mm -hmm. and, and also making the case for human rights. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get a buy-in from Dr. King in order to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember now, uh, both Dr. King and Malcolm had gone outside of this country in 1964. Mm -hmm. Malcolm made the pilgrimage in April of 64, okay. and Dr. King got the Nobel Peace Prize mm -hmm. in uh, December uh, of, of 1964. Mm -hmm. So when both of these men came back inside of the United States mm -hmm. in 1964, they had shifted from a race-based analysis mm -hmm. of the problem to more or less a class analysis mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also an international anal analysis. Mm -hmm. You remember Dr. King was talking about voting rights. Okay. He mm -hmm. was also talking about, uh, he started to move against the war in what, Vietnam. Uh, okay. And, and Malcolm had already mm -hmm. been there you, mm -hmm. some years early, even when he was in the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. So they both started to deal more with human rights mm -hmm. issues. They both started to deal with international issues, mm -hmm. being opposed to the war in Vietnam, being opposed to the apartheid government in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And so it looked as though the two men were starting to come together. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he was assassinated on February 21st, uh, 1965, which is on a Sunday at 3 o'clock. That following Tuesday, mm -hmm. he was supposed to meet mm -hmm. with uh, Martin Luther King at the home of Sidney Poitier. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to come together and have a discussion about how Malcolm could get on board mm -hmm. with the civil rights movement and take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because there's no doubt that Malcolm completely dominated the ghettos of the north, mm -hmm. and also some of the ghettos on the west coast, like Los Angeles, mm -hmm. San Francisco, and so forth. King completely dominated the southern region. Okay. So the mm -hmm. leaders, these two leaders, one uh, being the champion of the uh, the blacks in the inner Urban. cities of mm -hmm. the north, and the other one being the champion of the working class in the south, mm -hmm. as well as the, pe the peasants, mm -hmm. the sharecroppers in the south, mm -hmm. in Alabama, mm -hmm. Mississippi, and mm -hmm. Arkansas. So had those two men come together, in 1965, mm -hmm. the kind of problems that we're looking at now would probably not be in mm -hmm. existence because those two men, I think, working mm -hmm. in tandem, working together, would have been the type of unity that we needed mm -hmm. on the international front as well as the local mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you spoke uh, earlier about uh, uh, Dr. King and uh, Malcolm, and I think that at, at, at one time you indicated that uh, uh, Malcolm and King sort of uh, play the same role mm -hmm. in a real sense, and, 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 and they were both uh, disliked intensely by uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, uh, touch upon that. I mean, what was Malcolm's relationship with uh, Mr. Hoover, and, and why? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that there, there's even some suggestion that the government might have had something to do with his assassination, even though the government itself did not assassinate him. He was, uh, uh, from what I understand, he was assassinated by members of the uh, Nation of Islam's organization. But f talk, speak to that. Yeah, that was a myth, I think, and I would want to call it a myth, mm -hmm. 
that was sort of operating inside of the intelligence community mm -hmm. uh, in this country at that time. And much of it had to do with the fact that we were in the Cold War. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, communism versus